Hi, my name is Katerina. I'm a Canadian fine artist, and we're about to talk about art fairs. So, let's start from the beginning. I'll give you a little brief introduction into my practice and who I am as an artist. I'm a mixed media artist and curator, mainly focusing in oil painting. My work uses a lot of phthalo green and high contrast scenes to explore ideas of classism, femininity, and boundaries. I'm often using botanical scenes to dissect my experiences and the larger social impact that accompanies it. In this video, we're going to be talking about my first experience at the Artist Project, one of Canada's largest art fairs. Okay, so I have some mixed feelings about the show. I'm really happy I did it, and I think it was a really big learning curve for me, but um, I initially was waitlisted, so I didn't actually find out I was going to be in the show until the end of January, 2024. And the show was scheduled to be in April, so April 11th to 14th. They emailed me and offered me a 15 foot by 10 foot booth, which was huge. And it was going to be $5,000. So I turned it down. I just couldn't stomach that kind of fee and I couldn't get the paintings ready. It just wasn't going to work out. And they came back with a smaller booth. So they offered me a five foot by 10 foot booth for four thousand dollars and i i just said fuck it why not so i signed the contract and essentially had two months to prepare for the fair which is a little crazy so i decided to make a whole new series for specifically the artist project which knowing the sizes i work with and the fact that it's oil is a little bit ambitious. So I managed to have a really cohesive and clean booth setup because I made those pieces for the art fair. The fair was really exhausting and a lot more work than I was expecting it to be. I guess that would bring me into my number one suggestion when you're looking at being an art fair or being part of something like this is set out your expectations before you sign any contract or before you're making your final decision. I think it's really important to know why you're going into the fair or why you're going into this kind of exhibition, fair, market, whatever it is, and set out those goals. So if it's for sales, is it going to be realistic? Are you going to be able to make those sales? Before signing, I realized I wasn't in it to make sales. My main goal with being in the artist project was to gain exposure and was mainly to just have my art out there and be seen. I would say it's a little different than just having exposure. It was being part of the community, which is a big difference. If you're going in it to make sales and hopefully make some money, um, you have to, I think, look at the fair itself, research it a bit, and see if it's the right fit for your type of art. So art fairs in this kind of demographic have a very particular art that sells well. One thing I did find really helpful was the artist project provided an exhibitor kit for all exhibiting artists, and that basically just broke down the entire procedure, what to expect, what to prepare for, what to bring, um, it broke down a lot and it also provided a spot where you could have your work seen online as well. Some of the things they mentioned were using screws instead of nails so that you're not knocking down your neighbor's art. Another thing was they recommended not to use vinyl or stickers for your signage because they're trying to be more environmentally friendly. I actually ended up going with vinyl just because I used my old school, my university's print shop, because I still have access to it. So it ended up being only $10 for me to print my entire signage, which is extremely cheap. I know some people who are paying almost $80 just for one title sign. Um, so $10 for the entire package. It looked good. It was a little bit more effort because you had to peel and stick each individual letter, and I know, the G, don't, 
don't even talk to me about it. But I think that's well worth it. So that's my second recommendation is to contact your local universities and see if they have print shops accessible for the public or even alums. For the tools, I would say the essentials are a drill, measuring tape, level, I would use masking tape, a pencil, drywall screws. Really, that's all you need. There's nothing fancy. The setup is probably the easiest part. The hard part is, I think, personally, interacting with everyone and being there physically for the full four days. You're expected to be at the booth constantly and be interacting with people. Essentially, you're the talent, so you have to be there. Another must is business cards. So the amount of people I saw taking my business cards and then the amount of people I saw follow me after or look me up Business cards are definitely essential and they're fun to design. You can get them you can get them pretty cheaply made. I got mine at Staples. I wouldn't say they're the best quality or anything like that, but they are quick and they're cheap. But I definitely would recommend going to a local shop over Staples unless you're in a rush. For this project, I was really time crunching. Obviously making 15 paintings and then trying to get everything else all set up at the same time. It took a toll. So I didn't have as much time as I would have wanted to design all the business cards or to make sure the quality is there or even to have postcards. But I think I managed to do better than I expected. One thing I definitely regret is not putting out a guest signage book. So if you're not aware, a lot of the time galleries or artists will put out this book for guests to sign and essentially put down comments, notes, sometimes their information for newsletters or even for commissions. It's basically your spot to go back to and see who visited and have a mailing list and have a point of contact for your clientele. I wanted my booth to look really clean and crisp, so I decided just to have my paintings and a stool and obviously my signage but I didn't want to have the extra book or really any kind of clutter. So I decided to nix it, which I really regret. The amount of people that asked me for commissions or were going to go measure and come back to me or were just looking at the price and reconsidering, a guest book would have changed that. I would have had their information to write down and to contact after the fair. Fairs like this help you grow your community, not even just your clientele or collectors, but also through art galleries, through other artists that are at the fair, sometimes collectors like art consultants go there. In art specifically, community is a huge component to success. So if you don't have that foundation, an art fair is a really great spot to start initiating those conversations with peers and people in that kind of space. Another large component about fairs like this or events like this even is social media, unfortunately. Um, social media plays a big role in having that outreach and having that kind of communication with your followers and your audience. Um, it's really important to always be posting and tagging the fair as well. There was a lot of people that said they saw my work online first on the artist page, the artist project social media page, and then decided they had to come and see my work in person. Another big surprise for me actually was I got to see a lot of followers, um, which I was really surprised about, but happily surprised. It was my first time really getting to see a lot of people that I interact with almost on a weekly basis. Um, so it was really nice to finally get to see some people that appreciate my art and who are in the same kind of community as me. If you're not already, follow me on Instagram. I'll put a little link below. That's usually where you'll get the information first about my exhibits, upcoming galleries, new work. It's just a lot easier for me to post on Instagram before YouTube. So that's usually my first point of contact. Hence, there's going to be an upcoming exhibit in both June and July, actually. So it's, it's a busy month. Um, so stay tuned, follow me. But on that note, another big plus for me, at least that I experienced at Artist Project was I finally got to pinpoint who my target audience is and who my art really reaches. I always knew it was women. Um, 
my a lot of my work speaks to femininity and talks about the female experience so I'm not surprised at all but it's just nice to have that solidified I hope not too many people feel called out and that's not to say that men also don't appreciate my work I think the men that did stop and talk to me we always had a really interesting conversation about my work and a lot of the time they didn't quite get it at first but when they heard me tell my story and tell the meaning behind all the work, there was that kind of click and that connection afterward. I think there's a big benefit to being in such a public facing exhibition. You get to see that interaction and how the public actually interacts with your work. And now I think for my final recommendation, which is to have a short 15 to 30 second intro into who you are as an artist and what your practice is about. This is really important, not only to have an art first, but also just to have in your practice when you're networking or just being in your community. Being able to talk about your art and make it accessible and simple and quick, key there is quick, um, it makes it seem like you are more professional and you know what you're talking about. It also makes it seem like you're more dedicated and have more experience than you may actually have. For me, it was really simple because I made my entire series off of a poem. So an easy conversation starter was just, hi, my name's Katarina. This whole series that I made was based off this poem. So I had a printout of the poem for people to read. Um, and then from there, I would go on to talking about usually why phthalo green, why the eyes, why the style. Um, those are pretty common questions and I kind of got the hang of answering them pretty quickly. People want to understand your paintings, but also who you are as an artist. And now for some of the juicy bits. Would I participate in the artist project again? No, I don't think so. I'm happy I did it once and I'm happy I have that experience. I think everyone should at least have that experience once if they're able to. Um, but I don't think it was worth the $4,000 for me specifically. I think I could have taken that money and used it elsewhere and gone a lot further. I think that money spent on specifically outreach, whether it be through social media, networking, community building, I think spending that money there would be a lot more effective. Um, well, I'll acknowledge that it definitely brought a lot of people to my feed and my story. I think I could have reached those people in other ways. Community is a really key factor to having a successful career in the arts. You can be an amazing artist, but just not have your art seen by the right people. I think it's really important to go support other artists and be able to have that kind of community within your own circle. The people I've been able to meet this way, um, they've always been so nice and so caring and they always want to see other artists succeed. So it's a community that really will help not only through exposure, but also just they will help push you to the next boundary and help you break those boundaries. So if you're still on the fence about whether or not you want to do an art fair, whether or not it's going to be worth it for you, I say just do it. There's really no harm in trying at least once um, if you have the extra money to spend. I always think doing is the easiest way to learn. So whether or not it's going to be monetarily effective for you, you're going to learn something, whether it be positive or negative. Being able to have that interaction with the public, the audience, your own community is really important. And I think it's something that will help push your boundaries and help grow as an artist. If you're still watching, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've gained something from my rambling. Um, in my next video, I'm actually planning on building uh, my own stretcher bars from 2x4s, so subscribe, stay tuned. It's going to be a little chaotic, but um, very informative. See you in a bit.